Hello everyone, Jared here, and in today's video, I've decided to talk about a situation that just started recently in China's Inner Mongolia region. Like the peoples of Tibet, the Uyghurs of Xinjiang, and other minority groups across China, the Chinese Communist Party has decided to escalate conflict and cultural destruction of the country's Mongolian population. Why are they doing this? Well, that'll take a little bit of explaining. I'm sure that unless you are actively searching for news on the region, it is almost certain that you have not heard anything about it until now. This is a really important issue that's going on right now, and I don't see it being brought up by any major news organizations, so I thought that I need to talk a little bit about it. First, I feel it's necessary for me to provide some historical context on the situation. So, here we go. The history of the Mongols is deeply intertwined with China's history. The peoples to the north of China have clashed with Chinese dynasties many times over millennia. And as many of you probably know, the Great Wall was constructed largely in part to prevent nomadic hordes from raiding and conquering their ways south into Chinese lands. Most about what we know of these nomadic peoples is through written histories by Chinese scholars at the time. And the Mongols were just one of many groups that lived in the region known today as Greater Mongolia, where tribes such as the Xiongnu, Xianbei, Khitan, Jurchen, and Mongols, among many others, fought for control. The 13th century saw the rise of the Mongolian Empire, the largest to ever exist at that point, until it was eventually overthrown at the hands of the Chinese-led Ming Dynasty in 1368. Parts of Mongolia that are known today as Inner Mongolia were occupied by the Ming at that time, which then rebuilt many sections of the Great Wall that continue along most of the Inner Mongolian province's southern border today. When the Manchus took over China and established the Qing Dynasty in 1644, they also took control over all of Greater Mongolia as well. The Qing government forbade Han Chinese from moving north to and settling in Mongolian territories, but due to famine in much of northern China during the late 1700s, many Han Chinese moved into the area for better opportunities and farmlands. Mongols, however, were not given the same lax treatment under the law that the Han Chinese were provided, and were discriminated against to the point that they were not allowed to move from one portion of Mongolian territory to another without a specially approved passport. The migration of Han Chinese into Mongolia increased until the end of the Qing Dynasty, and when Mongolia attained independence from the Qing in 1911, internal strife prevented Greater Mongolia from reuniting under the newly proclaimed Khan into a single nation. The Republic of China, which formed after the fall of the Qing, declared that they would be a nation of five races, Han, Manchu, Mongolian, Tibetan, and Uyghur, and then proceeded to suppress Mongolian princes and force them to recognize the new republic's governance. After two decades of civil war, the Japanese invaded during the 1930s, taking control over some of the Mongolians' territories, which were then integrated into the Japanese puppet kingdom of Manchukuo until the end of World War II. By the end of the Second World War, the communists within Mongolia had maintained a strong militia that actively opposed independence movements by Mongolian princes, and with Soviet support, the Inner Mongolian region was decisively made part of the People's Republic of China. Mongolia was split into two parts, and it remains this way today. Currently, there are estimated to be over 4 million ethnic Mongols living within Inner Mongolia. Little is known about Inner Mongolia to the west, and little is ever reported about the Inner Mongolian region in global news. But one thing that everyone knows is that following the reform and opening of China under Deng Xiaoping in 1978, China as a whole saw a drastic economic development period. This growth also happened to take place in Inner Mongolia, which saw its highest growth period for a decade following the year 2000. However, this was a result of the extraction of natural resources from the region, as well as inconceivably massive amounts of environmental degradation and pollution that is absolutely worse than anywhere else on the planet. The Mongols within the Inner Mongolia region had already become a minority within their homeland by a rate of 6 to 1 due to the ever-increasing migration of Han Chinese to the region, but the economic opportunities that now existed only exacerbated both inequality between the two groups as Han Chinese are treated and hired preferentially. Many poor Mongols have settled in urban developments, taking on jobs as laborers, while the highly educated among them in the larger cities of the province assimilate and almost become indistinguishable from their Han counterparts. Few Mongolians within Inner Mongolia continue their nomadic traditions as the land changes around them. Han men are even granted bonuses at work if they marry local minorities and assimilate them into their dominant Han culture. Many Mongols, feeling discriminated against and marginalized in their own homeland, started to riot within the area in both 2011 and 2013. 
Now, with Xi Jinping as the leader of China, the Mongolian people's oppression is only getting worse, and resentment towards the government is on the rise again, particularly now. Last month, it was decided that starting this school term on September 1st, the Mongolian language would be phased out of teaching institutions across Inner Mongolia. This is not the first time that Mongolian language has been targeted by ruling Chinese governments. It declined in use during the late Qing, which sought to suppress the Mongolian people in an effort to assimilate them into the dynasty, and again under Mao's era during the Cultural Revolution and Great Leap Forward that treated history, culture, inequity, and diversity with disdain. Since 1995, the Mongolian language has experienced another decline, but as of this year, this month, it is now being targeted again for suppression like it was during those two preceding instances I just mentioned. According to the Constitution of the People's Republic of China, all ethnic groups in the People's Republic of China are equal. The state protects the lawful rights and interests of the ethnic minorities. The law additionally states that all street signs, public announcements, commercial outlets, and government documents must be bilingual within Inner Mongolia. However, in actual practice, this has never been entirely the case. Minorities' rights have continually been stripped away, and as with my two previous examples of the people of Hong Kong and the Uyghurs of Xinjiang, the situation is only going to get worse. Over a decade ago, when I wrote a paper in my undergraduate programs about the Uyghurs in Xinjiang, they had started to implement linguistic policies in schools similar to what is occurring now in the Inner Mongolia region, with restricting the use of the Uyghur language in schools. It expanded, and now we have concentration camps in Xinjiang province and cultural genocide. The parallels between that circumstance and the one that's starting now in Inner Mongolia is striking. Anyways, after declaring the removal of bilingual or, more specifically, Mongolian language from classrooms in the region, large protests broke out across the province on August 31st. Tens of thousands took to the streets in the largest rally against the CCP domestically in decades, probably since Tiananmen, over fears that their language would be wiped out. However, as we all should know by now, the CCP does not respond well to criticism or dissent. I first learned about this a couple of weeks ago when this was all starting up, and I waited until now to publish a video about it to see how things had developed. Well, the situation is predictably getting worse. Initially, locals were so outraged by this that even local CCP-funded news outlets refused to take the party's position over its decision to crack down on the Mongolian language. More than 300,000 Mongolian students have gone on strike. As an example of how big a deal this actually is, within Naiman County, where there were over 1,000 Mongolian students, a mere 40 registered for class, and only 10 showed up. In response, the CCP has taken a number of approaches, all of which range from bad to worse. The CCP claims that it has offered the five no changes as a compromise solution. What the five no changes policy basically states is that they will not change instruction in all but three areas, language and literature, morality and law, and history. However, there's not really a need for them to change language with respect to mathematics, science, art, and music, or physical education. The one where the Mongolian language is actually needed the most is for the three subjects that they are taking it away. Most of the Mongolian people recognize this, and that is why they are still continuing protests across the region. Many Mongol parents state the government has already begun to not respect the Five No Changes reform, banning all speaking in Mongolian at schools, banning books written in Mongolian language. Books written in Mongolian language have been taken off the shelves. In the regional capital of Hohat, reportedly printing shops refuse clients who want to have texts printed in Mongolian. Even photocopying texts in Mongolian is forbidden. In cities like Tongliao, which has a population of 3 million, cars were ordered off the streets for four days to prevent people from congregating while military forces moved in. In order to prevent Mongolian people from organizing any further resistance, Bainu, a Mongolian social media platform in China, has been closed down. And in defiance, many took to using other forms of social media and sent videos and posts to friends and relatives across the border in the country of Mongolia, where they are being reposted on social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, which are blocked in China. Meanwhile, the response from the nation of Mongolia across the border has been a massive uproar. On the other hand, Mongolian officials, however, have not taken a stance against the CCP on this due to their economic reliance on China. One former Mongolian president, however, did tweet a statement about the situation, saying, If a Mongolian does not have their own culture, history, and language, he is not a Mongolian. 300 years of humiliation against Mongolians should not continue in the new century.
As the crackdown against Mongolians and the protesters continues, the Chinese government is taking increasingly harsher stances. Thus far, at least 5,000 Mongolian students, parents, and other activists have been arrested. Students are breaking out of schools where they are being confined, and at least nine known protesters have committed suicide. The city of Xilin Hot is offering preferential treatment and access to those who bring their children back to schools, while also stating if they don't bring their children back soon, they will be expelled and the family's livestock herds will be inspected or even taken away. The province of Inner Mongolia announced just the other day as well that it would be starting to withhold bank loans, social security, and other services to those who continue protesting. This is all I have on the situation so far that has arisen over the past several weeks in China's Inner Mongolia region. I don't have high hopes that this situation is going to turn out for the best because, as we've seen many times before, the Chinese government is able to get away with suppressing people within their own nation. So the best thing that we can do now is to make the ongoing conflict known, just like the situation with the Uyghurs in Xinjiang and the people in Hong Kong. So please share this video with others if you think it is important. Spread the word about what's happening in Inner Mongolia, and I hope you will come back for future videos. Goodbye.